In this video, we're going to talk about the ways that mathematicians describe sets. Generically, we refer to this type of notation as set builder notation, but there really are two different main types of this. And understanding that there are two different types often will make it easier to, uh, to not conflate the two or get them confused. The first type, called property description, is something that we've seen before. Back in section 1.4 and 1.5, we had problems where we described a domain of values that could go in place of a variable, and then we described a predicate as a statement with that same variable in it. And the idea was that we could put values from the domain in place of the variable and then decide whether or not the predicate was true, whether that proves a true statement or not. So in sections 1.4 and 1.5, several exercises uh, gave a predicate and a domain and asked the question, what values from the domain make the predicate true? That's exactly what this type of description of a set is doing. Now, in chapter three, as we talk about sets, instead of using the term uh, domain, we're going to use the term universe, but it's the same thing. So this is the same thing as the domain that we use when we're talking about predicates, but we talk about all of our elements coming from an established universe. So when we have a problem where we're describing a set using property notation, we can think of this in two steps. First of all, think about the values in the universe. So in this case, the universe is the set of natural numbers, which is uh, the set of numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. So this is the set of natural numbers. And these are the possible values for the variable n. Now for each of those values, I think about the predicate, n is divisible by 4, and whether that is a true sentence, uh, if the number n, if the number that I'm looking at is, in, is uh, substituted for the variable n. So in this case, I can go across and just ask myself, is 0 divisible by 4? It is. And I can ask myself, is 1 divisible by 4? It is not. 2 is not divisible by 4. 3 is not divisible by 4. But 4 is divisible by 4. And I can just continue that way, considering every single value and circling the ones that make the predicate true. So notice that that means that uh, the set that I produce in that case will be just the set of elements that were circled. And notice that uh, that is a set that uses elements from the universe. So the, um, so the elements in the universe are the objects that I can choose from, and then the predicate is telling me which ones I should pick. The form description, um, you can think of it also as a formula description, works uh, the other way around. Well, the other way around. It works in a different way. Notice that I have a set described here on the right side of the colon. And instead of thinking of this as the domain, I'm going to refer to this as my index set. And again, that's a set of natural numbers, so I can list the possible values of k as 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on those are the natural numbers. Now notice that what's on the other side of the colon here, this is not a predicate. This is not saying anything at all in particular is true about a given value of k. It's just giving us a formula for something that we can, um, we can build out of the value of k. So from each of the values of k, I'm going to plug that value into the formula that I'm given in the set notation and in each case, I'll get a value. What did I do? Oh. Looking ahead. So for each value of k. So I'm not testing the original values of k to decide which ones to keep. Instead, I'm actually generating set values. So these are the set values. Notice that these values are the numbers uh, 0, then a half, then 2 thirds, then 3 fourths. 
Notice that these are not in the original index set. The index is just the values of a variable, and then we apply a formula to those values to get the values of our to get the members of our set. So there's no there's not necessarily any connection between the uh, what the index set is and what kinds of things you're going to get um, out of the formula. When we work with this notation, uh, we get the common mathematical sets of numbers. So the natural numbers, the set of integers, which is all positive and negative whole numbers, the rational numbers and the real numbers are denoted uh, as you see here. Um, you'll notice in some exercises that we kind of mark these up when we don't really mean all of the numbers. So for example, if we write R plus, we just mean the positive reals. That's pretty intuitive. Uh, and that will happen uh, plenty of time where we are only interested in the positive numbers. Uh, similarly, we can put a superscript greater than or equal to zero if we mean that we don't want to include any negative values in a set. So with that notation, the natural numbers would be the same thing as writing Z with a superscript of greater than or equal to zero, but the natural numbers come up so often that it's in our best interest just to use a simple letter for that. Here are a couple of practice problems using the property form. And so notice I have a universal set given, then a colon, and then a predicate that describes which of the values in the universe I should keep. So as we did before, I write down my possible values of n. And I'll go back and I'll circle any of them that, uh, any of those values that make the predicate true. So zero makes my predicate true because zero is an even perfect square. Four makes the predicate true because four is an even perfect square. The next value that would make the predicate true would be 16. In the second part, um, or for set B, we can play the same game. Here my letter is Z. Notice that uh, the, this is coming from the set of integers, and so I'll have negative numbers and positive numbers. Uh, the one thing we want to be careful of here is that my predicate is saying something about z minus 1 being divisible by 3. So I have to uh, be careful that I'm uh, doing the calculation that's being asked here. So when I use z equals negative 3, for example, if z is negative 3, then this statement is negative 3 minus 1 is divisible by 3. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. So if z is negative 3, the statement says negative 4 is divisible by 3, which is false. So I would not keep this guy. On the other hand, if z is negative 2, then the statement negative 2 minus 1 is divisible by 3 is the same as saying negative 3 is divisible by 3. And that is true. So I would keep negative 2 in my, in my set. So negative 2 is going to make the cut. Um, negative 1 is not and 0 is not. The next one that will is 1. If z equals 1, then 1 minus 1 is divisible by 3. 0 is divisible by 3 is a true statement. So the next value that goes into my, my list is the number 1. And if you keep going forward, you'll find that 4 is the next one, and there's a nice pattern to the numbers that are being included. To practice using the form description of a, of a set, uh, we have a few problems here. And again, the idea is to write down numbers from our index set. Our index set here is the set of all integers. So I'll include negative ones and positive ones. And the formula applied to these um, values is doing 3 times c squared, where the c is the, the value above. So uh, 3 times negative 3 squared is 27. 3 times negative 2 squared is 12. 
3 times negative 1 squared is 3, 3 times 0 squared, and then I'll get the same values again, because 1 squared is the same as negative 1 squared, and so on. And so these are all values in the, these are all members of the set. Uh, set D uh, is just to, to remind us that the common sets that we wrote down, the N, Z, Q, and R, those aren't the only things that the index sets can be. Any well-defined set could be used. So in this case, our index set is the set of primes. So P has to be a prime number, which means P could be 2 or 3 or 5 or 7 or 11, and so on, the set of all primes. And then the formula is going to generate values of my set. Uh, the formula says to double and add 1 each of these numbers. So double 2 and add 1 is 5, double 3 and add 1 is 7, double 5 and add 1 is 11, double 7 and add 1 is 15, and double 11 and add 1 is 23. And again, the elements of the set are just the results of this formula. The final example here is um, just increasing the complexity a little bit so that the um, either the, the universal set could be a complicated set or the index set could be complicated or the formula could be complicated. But there, um, this is the most common uh, example where uh, students sometimes get confused. And the reason is because there, uh, there's a predicate here. This is a predicate. So this is the property form. I have a universal set. And then I have a test to decide whether a number should go in there or not. But the predicate actually involves a formula. And so we have um, the, the possible confusion about what to do with that formula as an intermediate step. So because it's complicated, I might use um, like a table to kind of uh, organize my thoughts here. so that I can be methodical about it. Uh, the, the universe is a set of natural numbers, and so A could be 0, or 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, and so on. The predicate says A squared plus 1 is prime, and so I want to make sure I write that down using my value of A. So when A is 0, that statement is 0 squared plus 1 is prime. When a is 1, that's the statement 1 squared plus 1 is prime. So this seems a little bit tedious, but what I'm trying to do here is not uh, get fixated on the, the formula within the uh, predicate, but rather see that uh, predicate as an entire statement all at once for each particular value. So now that I have these statements, I can go back and I can ask myself, is the sentence that I wrote true? So uh, 0 squared plus 1 is zero is 1. 1 is not prime, and so I would not include that a. The second statement says 1 squared plus 1 is prime. That's true. The third statement says 2 squared plus 1 is prime. That's also true. The third statement says 3 squared plus 1 is prime, and that's not true. So I just go down the list like that. The key is to not get distracted by what the formula is giving you. Since this is a property description, ultimately what I want is the A's that have true statements. So don't get confused about the numbers that are being produced here. They are not part of the, the, the set that we're going to get. The values in the set are the values of A that give us a true statement. So, so far, I have uh, figured out that A equals 1 and A equals 2 are both in that set. I would have to keep going a little bit to get the next one, but um, but the main thing is that it's the values of A that make the predicate true are the elements of the set.